Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Tragedy Galore. Hey, I want to do a video on why I think the Forrest Finn memoirs are key to finding the treasure chest. And I've made that statement previous in my videos, and I've kind of made it clear that I am what you consider a book purist. I don't know if that's a new term used or not, but I am a sole believer that the answers to the clues in the poem are in his books. And I want to go over a few quotes um, that I found on Terry Scant and then kind of give an overview on what I think they mean. So the first quote I want to bring up is on 4-4-2003, Forrest Fenn replies, Emily, all the information you need to find the treasure is in the poem. The chapters in my book have very subtle hints, but are not deliberately placed to aid the seeker. The next question. Are there subtle hints in the Thrill of the Chase book? Forrest replies, yes, if you can recognize them. The next quote from 2015. I don't want to broaden the clues and hints I've written about by pointing them out. What surprises me is that nobody, to my uncertain knowledge, has analyzed one important possibility related to the winning Saul. The next quote from 2013, I'm going to skip to the end of it. You can find all these quotes if you just type in hints and Terry Scant. So the third one, he says, What I didn't expect was the number of people who imme immediately started searching maps and using Google Earth to locate their special spots. Many have read my, my book multiple times looking for additional clues or even hints that might assist them in the hunt. The next one. You should start with the first clue and follow the other others consecutively to the treasure. Hints in the book are not that organized. And then the next one. All the information you need to find... Okay, so that's a repeat one, so I'll skip that one. The next question. Are there subtle hints in the book? Yes, if you can recognize them. I think we went over that one, too. So, the next one. What tips do you have for those wanting to find the treasure? Here's what I would do. Read my book in a normal manner. Then read the poem over and over, slowly, thinking. Then read my book again, this time looking for subtle hints that will help solve the clues. The next question is, how much more likely are hunters to work out where warm waters halt with the aid of the thrill of the chase compared to without it? Forrest replies, you sure ask confounding questions. The clues are in the poem, but there are hints in the book. The next one, Will the subtle clues in the book be explained somewhere, sometime? Forrest replies, The hints in the Thrill of Chase text will not be made public because they would say more than I wanted to reveal. Discovering which, which hints to use is part of the mystery. So I kind of want to stop there and give an overview of these ones. So he's made it pretty clear. That all the information you need is in the poem. And what that means is the nine clues that you have to follow precisely are in the poem. That's all you need is the directions. But to decipher what are those clues, what is Warm Waters Halt, you have to use the book. And I am, I am so firm on that belief. I can't, can't even begin to explain. Because I always hear... Who, from people who are poem purists, that you read the book and then you use your confirmation bias to see clues in that book. But I completely see it the opposite direction. When you read that book, and there are, there are rabbit holes, I will, I am very confident in that, and that's, and that's why that last quote that I just read, like pretty much confirms that. The hints in the thrill of the chase text will not be made public because they would say more than I want to reveal. Discovering which hints to use 
is part of the mystery. So he's added a whole bunch of stuff in there to throw you off. But I believe the key word is that what helps you de decipher which hints to use. If you don't use the book, wouldn't you just be implementing what you think warm is, what you think waters is, and what halt is? You can go to the dictionary and find out what all those words mean, but you're still going to incorporate what you think that means instead of going back to what forest means that's it that is forest wrote this poem it is so obvious right it's so obvious forest wrote this poem to fit hundreds if not thousands of places in the rocky mountains where this could fit you can tell with all the different solves that have been posted or that you came up with yourself so many things fit because you can go to a place where, okay, warm waters, okay, there's a, yeah, there's a canyon, and, oh, home of brown, it could be trout, could be bears. Well, there's a lot of places where trout and bears live, you know what I mean? So if you're not using what Forrest has wrote or what he has said, then how are you ever going to be able to decipher what he actually means? Because he has said that you need to decipher those clues. So you're not you're not gonna go out and find a you know, a warm springs, you know, and there's gonna be a brown mountain somewhere. I am pretty confident that that's not what you have to do. And I really wanna give some of the things I've seen him seen in the book myself, and I might later on give you a few clues that well few clues that I think. But the reason why it's important to read his memoirs is because each clue that I found, I found a hint in The Thrill of the Chase, and then I found a hint that backs up what I found in Too Far to Walk, and then I found another hint that backs up those two hints in Once Upon a While. And that's how I got myself using the books, and hey, it might be a rabbit hole, but the amount of rabbit holes that you could find in the Thrill of the Chase are a lot less than the rabbit holes you can find out without the books. But always remember when you listen to my videos that this is all my opinion, and I don't have the chest, and I'm not some lead authority or some know-it-all in this chase. You know, I know just as much as you guys. So every time I say something, it's my opinion. You know, if you don't agree, I'm not saying that you're wrong, you know, because there's a good chance that I'm wrong. But with everything that I do, I always try to go back to the books or what Forrest Finn has said and, and go from there. Because if you base your solve off of those things, then no one can tell you that you are wrong, you know, unless you say, hey, you know, my warm water's halt is a dam, you know, and then we can go on and say, you know what, Forrest has eliminated that, you know, if you're going to believe Forrest hid a treasure, then you also have to believe the words that he says, even though some things he has said are very, you know, contradictory to other things that he has said. So, but I think... I think he's a master at words, and there's a reason why he does that, but the reason is unknown to me. But I just wanted to make that clear to you guys that, you know, this is all my opinion, that the books are important. But I think I think he makes it seem like they they are, in fact, really important. You know, the advice that he gives someone, you know, in the Lorraine Mills interview, you know, what's it, some advice? he would have for a searcher that is very serious about finding his treasure. And his exact words are, read my book. Then go back and study the poem. Study every line, every word. Every word is deliberate in that poem. And I'm gonna, I will make another video here really quick on, on, uh, how one would do that and go through the books and find 
examples through them. And, you know, you might think it's just a rabbit hole, but in my eyes, you know, I think that's the best way to find this treasure. So my next video, I will post that and, um, you know, hopefully get some feedback. And, you know, if there's a searcher out there that's really serious about his books, you know, his study of his books extensively, you know, I'd, I'd love to get in contact with you guys and to shoot some ideas across to each other. But that's the end of this video. Uh, hope you guys like it. And again, it's just my opinion. You know, if you're a poem purist, more power to you, man. I, You could be right and I could be wrong, you know. But anyways, well, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, my next two videos are going to be really interesting. So can't wait to get those out to you. Thanks, guys. Bye.